What is the best lube hole that you've ever found? I didn't find this lube hole but my friend did. A few years back, an online store had this promotion where whoever spent the most money over a month would get free round trip airplane tickets to anywhere in the world. My friend, who's a refined genius, found that one thing you could buy on the site was a gift certificate. So he bought a $25 gift certificate and kept spending it on another $25 gift certificate. So he ended up spending $25 on round trip tickets to Australia. My brother once yelled last one to jump in the pool is gay, and then jumped into the pool. However, I figured out that if I did not jump in then technically he would be the last one in the pool, and he is still gay to this day. I used to work at Papa John's to pay my way through college. There was a contest we had where if you got someone to upsize their pizza from like a medium to a large for an extra $2, you got points towards movie tickets. A large was simply $2 extra normally anyways. Anyone that ordered a large, I simply put in a medium and upsized it. I won every fine week. My co-workers didn't notice this obvious loophole and it didn't cost the customer extra so I didn't have a problem with this morally gray area. Free movie tickets every week was a huge in college. My high school had a stupid rule that banned you from attending prom if you went to a Saturday detention that semester. I got in trouble and was assigned to Saturday, D Hall, but my girlfriend really wanted to go to prom. I just kept skipping it and they kept adding more until they rolled it into a day of actual suspension. They had no rule barring you from prom for an out of school suspension so I got a day off and took my girl to prom. I can't remember when it happened, but it was years ago, I think it was next year, or some other canned tea. But if you bought a case of tea then there was a coupon on the box for a free case. Except it was on every case. So now you have case number 2 and another free case coupon. All the tea could be had. When I was in high school I applied for a summer job with the county. As part of the unbiased application process. Each applicant was asked to take an intelligence test. The test consisted of about 80 questions. Each question was 4 or 5 line drawings. And you had to put an X in the box next to the one that didn't belong. Pretty easy. I happened to notice though, that the test paper was two part, which is two sheets of paper that are attached together back to back with a sheet of carbon paper in between. I could peel the sheets apart and look inside, the second sheet just had a bunch of boxes printed on it, and I could see from the first few questions that I'd answered that the X's I'd marked ended up in the printed boxes on the second sheet thanks to the carbon paper, so, I did all of the questions with obvious answers, and if I wasn't sure, I just peeled the paper apart. Noted where the box was printed on the second sheet, and made sure I got it right. Of course, I got 100%. I figure that if you can cheat on an intelligence test, you're pretty smart. Michigan used to have a law that a minor could not plead guilty to a crime without a lawyer. I found this out by accident when I was 13 and used it 3 more times before I was an adult. What happens is that I as a minor would just plead guilty. They would then give me a sentencing date and let me leave. Then a week or so later I would get a letter stating that it is not legal for me to plead guilty without a lawyer and my case was dismissed or thrown out because of it. I got out of 3 minor in possession tickets that way. I was working maintenance at McDonald's when they did a Best Buy Bucks promotion. Large sodas and large fries had a scratch off that was worth at least $1 at Best Buy. I would go through the trash daily, pulling out all the discarded scratch offs. I got a free computer that year for Christmas. I also had a poor cashier at Best Buy in tears. She had to manually scan each scratch off and verify the dollar amount. My university was trying to encourage people to walk so if we download a specific health tracker that's connected to our account, it would convert steps into points. The points would get you stuff like free coffee, mugs, discounts for stuff and the most expensive prize, a university hoodie which costs about £30. Now, the health tracking app is pretty basic. It won't let you log your steps manually however it does let you connect with other health apps. I found a health app that would let me add in the steps and I logged in an equivalent of 50 kilometers a day and in a few days of logging manually, I would get myself a hoodie or two and I didn't get caught. However, I told my friend about it, and he really perfected the method of getting more steps a day, because apparently there was a hidden physical limit to how far a person can walk in a day, but he managed to trick it by setting his height to be 1 centimeter and because the shorter you are, 
the more steps you need to take to cover the same distance. In the end he claimed about 10 plus hoodies and he would just get them for anyone who asks. The uni found it suspicious. So he received an email telling that the activity had to stop unless he could provide evidence that he walked that much. Another friend had a different method. You get points just by being friends with them on the university health website. He also found that he could access a list of everyone who had an account in that website. So he made a python script that would automatically send a request to everyone, earning him points. For a while McDonald's had a promo where, when you walked in, you could scan a QR code and possibly get free food. However, different locations and different cutouts had different codes. I took pics of as many unique codes I could find, put them all on a handy PDF, and scanned them all using an Android device and an iOS device before lunch. I got free extra value meals regularly. In fact, I still had a couple free ones left over when they stopped the promotion. Took a survey course in college which basically amounted to a course the school was planning to offer in the future, but giving the professor an opportunity to fine-tune the curriculum before officially offering it as a class. Easy enough course. Got my credit. Went home happy. Next semester the course went live and was offered under a different course number but the description was identical. Signed up. Never attended a class. Took the final and got my credit again. I'm not sure if they do this anymore. But many years ago, while an employee at Home Goods, the store had this promotion where employees could get these scratch-off cards that reduce the cost of an item by the 1st of May $20 each time they found a price sticker on the floor. Each card had three scratch-off areas, and the catch was that you could only scratch off one. However, if you used a lamp, you could see which scratch-off area was the 1st of May 20 meaning that you could very easily rack up a $20 gift card for every sticker you found on the floor. The idea was that if employees collected these fallen stickers, regular, nefarious shoppers couldn't stick them on something of far greater value and check out at that price. There were no rules on how many an employee could have or combine. Because most folks who worked at that store were middle-aged women who really couldn't give a ref and most of the stuff home goods sells is garbage. But then there was me a starving, broke college kid, who got paid, but who worked in the back room unloading trucks, and who also was occasionally tasked with stocking shelves. In short, I was the only person who seemed to give a sh about this promotion, and my bosses, who wanted to show their higher-ups that they were putting the corporate programs into effect were happy to oblige each sticker I presented with a scratch-off ticket of my own. Now Home Goods, while normally a purveyor of fine garbage, also occasionally has very nice, very high-end, housewares on the cheap. Comparatively, these items, like cookware, linens, comforters, etc., are more often than not, usually much more expensive than the rest of the store's stock, and take a while to sell. For me, the guy who unloaded the trucks. This meant that when I saw something absurdly nice, I could put it very high up into a loading bay, and just let it sit for a while, because the senior citizens I worked with would never go up to get it. At the end of a 4 month summer, I'd amassed about 1100 in these little gift cards, and with them I bought, a full set of all clad copper core cookware, a new piece came in once a month, a queen sized down comforter, duvet cover and sheets, pillows, nice flatware, plates and glasses, a dozen useful kitchen tools. To this day, 10 years later, I still have all the old clad, which alone retail for 800, and some of the kitchen tools, all of it for free. An agreement I had with an employer on school reimbursement with additional pay. I had to agree to remain at the company until X date and they would pay for my schooling additional pay for various things. If I left, I had to pay the money back. Edit for context I received reimbursement bonus at the end of every quarter based on completion of a class a certain grade. I had already received 20k at this point. The parent company of my division changed after the agreement was signed and time came for me to get the cash owed to me. Head of HR refused to pay. I went to him and asked why I wasn't getting the check we agreed to. He stated that the agreement was with the previous parent company and therefore was no longer valid. He had this smug look on his face. But then he noticed I had a big smile on my face. I could tell he couldn't figure out why. I asked him again if they were refusing to pay and he said yes. I then stated that I no longer have anything binding me here. Because the contract stated if I willing leave the company, I have to repay the money. 
he agreed and asked what my point was. I then stated that if the parent company did change then I did leave said company, but I did not willingly leave, therefore, I did not owe any money if I left this company as it was not the company I signed the agreement with. The expression on his face changed, I continued on with, if I, hypothetically, put my two weeks notice in now, I would be able to leave without owing any money, it didn't take him long. He realized by stating that the agreement was longer valid because the company changed that he gave me the information I needed to get out of the contract. He agreed to pay me the money. Spoiler alert. He was fired a few weeks later for various reasons. He was one of the worst HR directors I have ever seen. This was something of a literal loophole, which my friends and I exploited at Dave and Buster's. For those of you who may not be familiar with the establishment, Dave and Buster's is sort of a restaurant sports bar, and arcade all rolled into one. There are dozens of allegedly skill-based games from which you can win tickets, and then you can use those tickets to buy cheap prizes that you don't actually want and won't actually use. That is, of course, unless you buy a whole bunch of those sticky hand things. Those things are awesome. Anyway, on the night in question, my friends and I discovered a game in which you were supposed to hit a button at just the right time to make a ball drop into a numbered ring. It was designed to be insanely difficult, and in fact it might have been impossible, had it not been for the hand-sized hole in one side of the machine. We took turns playing the game, which involved acting like we were trying to time our button presses, then catching the ball as it fell and quickly depositing it into the highest scoring ring. We managed to rack up several hundred tickets in this way, but our best discovery came when we were ready to turn those tickets in. It used to be that when you exchanged tickets for prizes, arcades would run them through a counting machine. At Dave and Buster's or at least, at the one that we visited they used a scale to determine how many tickets a customer had accumulated. This scale happened to be positioned in such a way that if one were to lean on the counter at just the right angle, they'd be able to push down on it during the weighing process. By the end of the outing, my friends and I had actually managed to buy a $20 piece of schlock for the low, low price of only $20, and at one of those arcades, that's definitely a victory, if I recall correctly, we left that night with a vaguely futuristic looking alarm clock, that was only because they were out of those sticky hand things, though. In the summer of 2009, a new water park, Aquatica, opened up in Florida. My cousin and I went nearly every single day, from open to close, for two months. It's my favorite out of all the water parks I've visited with many awesome rides and attractions. But, for the purposes of this question, we'll be focusing on just one ride and a couple other things, the river and some of their restaurants. See, the park had lockers where people could store their stuff, small, and large lockers. Smalls were $5, large were $10. But if you brought the key for the large lockers back, you'd get back $5. There were also three restaurants in the park. One was a buffet. One had great chicken tenders and fries. And another had awesome burgers. Luckily for my cousin and I, there was a pass you could get that let you eat unlimited at all three restaurants for the entire day. Now, the keys did come with a wrist strap so you could always have your key on you and not lose it. But most people would stick the key in their pockets and go into the river, not realizing that it wasn't the typical lazy river and, in fact, had some pretty powerful jets under the water to keep things moving. Even full grown men can have trouble standing in the middle of the river, due to how fast it was going. Well, my cousin and I figured out within the first couple of days that people were just losing their keys and loose change all over that river. We could have done the responsible thing, which was to turn in the lost keys and pocket the change. But we were teenagers and a-holes, so what we did instead was turn in the keys. Yes, but as if it was our own key, and we'd pocket the $5, we would alternate who would turn in a key, as well as time it so that each time we did turn in a key, it was with someone brand new. Further lowering the chances of getting caught, we'd turn in an average of about 10 keys every single day, we'd then use that money plus whatever change we'd gathered to buy the eating pass, and pig out, adding to that the fact that my dad was actually giving us money so we could buy the food pass, and we were turning quite a bit of profit that summer. He spent his money on hair stuff, and I spent mine on video games. Best summer ever.